On this video I'd like to show you some of the recent upgrades I've done to one of my PPU rigs to incorporate a number of screens built directly into the rack with easy switching to allow me to change the output that's being displayed without any rewiring and all built into a fairly compact and transportable rack. A number of viewers have seen social media pictures of my rig and asked me to do a video on how I incorporated the monitors into the rack. Last year I did a video showing the PPU2 rig in conjunction with my main vMix PC. Over the summer I reconfigured that rig with some new components including a mini PC with vMix built right in and I decided to turn it into my main portable streaming rig as opposed to my PPU1 rig which is more geared up for festival jobs and includes things like a video router, talkback base station and fibre connectivity built directly into the rack. Let's start by having a look at the components that are now in the rig and then I'll move on to explain how I fitted the screens into the rack and it gives me some very flexible display options especially for those occasions when transport or space is a bit limited and we can't take extra screens along. The main switcher is a Constellation 2ME HD unlike PPU1, which has an 8M 1ME Production Studio 4K switcher. It's extremely rare at the moment to be asked for a 4K live stream. In fact, I've only done a couple. One was directly from the YouTube studio space in London. I'll link to a behind the scenes vlog of that event if you're interested. Others were very specific 360 degree medical training videos typically used with VR headsets that need to be in very high resolution. So the Constellation HD with its 20 inputs and 12 outputs really gives me all the flexibility I need for most streaming jobs. In this rig I've incorporated a Hyperdeck Studio Plus. I find recording to SD card can suit my workflow better, but I still have the option to plug in a USB-C SSD when needed. For streaming I have a Web Presenter 4K and I absolutely love the monitoring screens, which gives me a good indication of exactly what's going on with both the video signal, audio and stream. I also have a live view encoder available as a backup or for mission critical streams that require bonding. Although I have several connectivity options built straight into the rig, as you'll see shortly. Another new feature of this rig is the inclusion of a refurbished HP Elite Desk Mini PC. While it's not the most powerful with an i5 processor, it's perfectly capable of running all my control software and a copy of vMix HD. It may be below the recommended specification for running vMix on a big production, but like my HP i5 laptop, I know it's quite capable of allowing me to play out HD video files, overlay name captions, or even taking a vMix call if needed. And for any bigger jobs, I have a full vMix PC rack that will simply sit directly on top and provide the extra capabilities needed. I've been on many jobs in the past where, despite discussing all the requirements ahead of time, somebody suddenly turns up and wants to play out an HD video file, or one of the speakers can't turn up and wants to call in remotely. The PC also runs the ATEM control software and companion for the Stream Deck, which allows me to set up control macros for the ATEM, Hyperdeck, Web Presenter, and vMix all together. That's fantastic for being able to set up show startups and set sequences throughout the show. The PoE switch allows me to connect multiple Ethernet devices together in the rig and provides power for the external switcher panel. On the back of the rack is a GL barrel travel router which allows me to plug in an external internet connection without the need to reconfigure any IP addresses internally. Thanks to Doug Johnson for that tip. It also allows me to connect to an internet or Wi-Fi connection from my 5G hotspot, also plumbed in. The rig itself doesn't always need internet connectivity, even for streaming, but it does allow me to use things like the mini PC to log into my email, or a Dropbox folder, for example, to download last minute information or files sent to me by the client. Also on the back of the rack, there's an SDI patch panel, allowing me to connect inputs and outputs easily from the back of the rig. 
Some inputs and outputs are wired via HDMI converters, allowing me to easily connect to external monitors or take an HDMI input from a laptop presentation. The converters are powered from an internal USB power block along with the internal LED strip and a set of quiet extractor fans. Not that this rig gets particularly hot. At the bottom of the rig there's also a power supply unit for my Tech Pro talkback system. It's not a full base station like on PPU1, but it does allow me to plug in belt pack chains and have a fully working talkback system. It's rare for me to need 20 inputs or even 12 separate outputs, so I've used a bank of inputs and outputs to manage monitor routing instead of fitting a separate video hub. This allows me, through macros, to change what appears on any of the three built-in screens to suit my needs. This means I can choose what is displayed on any monitor instantly, without having to change any cabling. And I can do this from either the Stream Deck or the switcher panel. I can bring up multi-view, program output, preview, web presenter or hyperdeck monitoring screens, the PC or vMix output as needed. I mentioned that the rig doesn't need internet to operate, even sometimes for streaming. This is because of the USB outputs from both the web presenter and Constellation, which allow me to quickly connect to an external laptop as well as the internal PC and stream an output directly to Zoom or similar over the webcam inputs. Again, while the internal PC can run Zoom, I prefer to use an external laptop, which is just there to run the Zoom feed. Equally, I can send the Constellation output straight back into the internal vMix software if needed. That makes it all incredibly flexible and provides a degree of redundancy to the system. I like working with bigger screens, but I decided on this rig I wanted to build screens directly into the portable rig, and I figured that the best place to do this was on the front removable lid of the case, which is normally redundant once it's in operation. I looked long and hard at how I could do this, trying to figure out how I might be able to hinge the lid to rotate in one direction or another, but all of those options had some drawbacks and required drilling holes in the case. In the end, I came up with some ready-made brackets, designed as feet to mount TV sets on, that could easily be fitted or removed for transport. The lid itself doesn't sit flat as the bottom is curved, but by simply fitting these brackets to the lid with Velcro strips, the centre of gravity keeps the unit very stable and can easily be placed either side or on top of the PPU as needed. The harness is made to a suitable length, in this case about one and a half meters, and allows me to place the monitors within a reasonable distance of the rack. I decided on readily available 15 inch flat screen monitors that are powered by USB-C and take a mini HDMI input for the signal. Please note, it's very important to check the specification of the monitors to make sure they will support the format you wish to use. Some of the early monitors I tried simply wouldn't work with either a video signal or a multi-view output from the ATEM. In the end, I found some MSI monitors that worked very well and fitted these into the lid, again using Velcro for easy removal, and some Velcro straps to fit the harnesses in place. Once set up, the whole unit is very stable. This year I also brought a Blackmagic 1ME advanced panel to go with this rig. This also gives me instant access to macros and allows me to access the second ME when needed. Having upgraded this rig I also decided to rack mount the main vMix PC. This makes it easier to transport and it slots directly on top of the main PPU with easy connectivity from the deck link card into the main rig. I also fitted a spare 10 inch screen directly to the front with, you guessed it, Velcro. And this allows me to boot up and shut down the machine without having to connect an external monitor, which can be extremely handy sometimes. For most of my productions, I'm using multiple Panasonic CX350 camcorders as my main workhorse over SDI. 
There's a lot more videos about that camera on my channel. Finally, with this setup, I tend to carry around an A10 Mini SDI Pro ISO in the box as an emergency backup switcher, or on occasion, as a secondary SSD recorder. Well, that pretty much covers the upgrades to the rig. I got to use it for the second half of 2023 on a number of different events, and it worked extremely well for me. I'm very pleased with how it's worked out. I hope you found it useful and can make use of some of the ideas and let me know in the comments below or ask any questions if you've got them. And don't forget to hit subscribe and watch out for more tech content on the channel.